Some say that motorbikes were invented by car designers on half the budget. And that secretly, they found driving on half the number of wheels twice the fun. All we know is aerodynamics make them both go faster. But in case of a motorbike, it's all a bit more difficult. Let's start with the obvious. Motorbike drag is a disaster. Apart from some laminar flow at the front fairings, turbulence is king everywhere else on the bike. With open wheels, sharp edges and a driver shifting position every two seconds, it's a very big challenge to bring down aerodynamic drag. Over time, people have tried to shield and streamline the driver to bring down this aerodynamic drag, but sidewind sensitivity and practicality are big concerns, as you can imagine. Obviously, aerodynamic drag can be overcome by using more power. But with acceleration and aerodynamic drag both trying to flip you over backwards, they add up to make you wheelie even faster. And as cool as that may sound, this doesn't really help during a race, because it's a sign that you have reached your maximum acceleration rate. During a race, that's not something that you want. So imagine that there is something that could keep the front wheel down onto the ground during acceleration. That would help a great deal. And that's exactly why over the past years, Ducati and others have been experimenting with front wings on their bikes. These aerodynamic devices generate aerodynamic downforce that push the front wheel down, counteracting the moment created by acceleration and aerodynamic drag. And this is increases your maximum acceleration rate. The effect of downforce on cornering is a bit more complex though, as the aerodynamic vector tilts along with the lean angle of the bike. The downforce generates more pressure and creates more grip, but it also pushes you outwards in the corner. The net effect is only positive if, for example, you have a tire friction coefficient that is higher than 1, or if the rider is leaning more into the corner than the bike itself, keeping the vector of the downforce as vertical as possible. So once you've found a way to put more power down, it's a matter of generating more of it. But with more power come bigger cooling demands, and more cooling means bigger and heavier radiators, unless you can make them work more efficiently. The net airflow through a radiator is the result of the pressure difference between the front and the back. So increasing this pressure difference means a bigger flow rate and a better performance and efficiency of the radiator. With computational fluid dynamics simulations, it's easy to spot or even create these high and low pressure zones that you need for the radiator. Typically, the high pressure inlet is located at the front of the motorbike, whereas the low pressure outlets are located for example on the sides. Not all bikes are designed to go as fast as possible though. Some are there for highway cruising. Just you and the road, mile after mile. You and perhaps a little bit of wind noise. Designing the shape of the front windshield and the helmet are crucial to keep noise levels low. This noise is typically the consequence of turbulent kinetic energy of the airflow being converted into noise energy. Simulating the sound power generated in the airflow around the rider greatly helps to understand where this noise is coming from and how you can reduce it. Another effect of this turbulence is the heat transfer rate. A turbulent airflow is much more capable of transferring heat between the rider and the surrounding air. Now that can be a good thing on a hot summer day when you need some chill, but it can also make you freeze on a cold winter night. And on that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to end this second episode on sports aerodynamics. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click the like button and please leave us some comments below. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Bye bye.